Travis Etienne was a huge success. I'll tell you why I think he's a stud moving forward on this edition of Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining me here on the Locked On Jaguars podcast. I am Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen. Also, we're free on all platforms, reminding you that wherever you get your podcast, audio or video, it will be for free. You can also like and subscribe to that YouTube page, and I will be eternally grateful for you doing that i have to let you know that this episode is brought to you by fan fan duel sports book official sports book of the nfl make every moment more visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started sorry about the late start today we had some equipment issues that we had to get settled and we got them settled right uh new people all of the new visitors to the locked on jaguars podcast Kick off your shoes, relax your feet, go make a sandwich. You are at home once you come through that door. You're no longer new. You belong to us, and I ain't going to let you leave until I'm ready for you to leave. I like that. I remember Lane Kiffin said that to his Tennessee football team. We're going to lock them in, and they ain't getting out until we let them out. And That's how I feel about you all joining me here every single day. We're going to talk about Travis Etienne. We had to have this conversation. It was a delayed conversation of whether or not Travis Etienne was worth the uh, first round pick that was used on him. We love to get mad at Urban Meyer and blame Urban Meyer for everything. And we love to say anything he did didn't work, but that is just flat out not true in terms of the way that this team drafted in year one. He was worth the first pick because if you think about it and go back, when this team used another first round pick on a running back not too long ago, I think it was around 2016 or 2017, Folks were angry because even though Leonard Fournette came with a lot of fanfare from college, <clears throat> that's a very high pick to use on a player. But it also stemmed from his play. Folks thought he wasn't elusive enough and he did not create enough on his own. If you were expecting Leonard to do that, then you just weren't in from the very beginning because that ain't what Leonard does. Leonard seeks and runs over people. But in the NFL, folks don't really like that. He's gone. He got his Super Bowl ring. He got his claim to fame, and uh, he might even be back one day. We'll have to see. But the reason why I'm going through that is because there was so much talk of whether or not Travis Etienne was worth the pick that the Jaguars used. And then he got hurt in the preseason against Detroit, and we had to wait a whole year to find out exactly what he was going to bring and how he was going to make this team better. Comes back the following year, him and James Robinson both coming off of injuries. And what happened? James Robinson starts out with a bang. Leonard Fournette is um, – Leonard Fournette. Travis Etienne is a good complimentary player and a complimentary piece. And folks say that's not why you use the number 18 overall pick on anybody to be a compliment. He needs to be better. I think it was 18, somewhere between 18 and 24, right? Well – I saw in preseason, and I told anybody who would listen, that in the preseason, he looked like a Brian Westbrook, right? Brian Westbrook, who used to play with the Eagles. I even asked Press Taylor about that, and he smiled at me. And he said he would heard that before, but he also let it be known that he wasn't with the Eagles when Brian Westbrook played with the Eagles. But the fact that he'd heard that before, he probably heard it from a good source, maybe a guy like Doug Peterson, who probably said that same thing on how he would be used. Well, what makes it seem like a guy like that isn't worth a pick that high is when you watch Kansas City, it seems like whoever they plug in, whether it's Jarek McKinnon, this Pacheco kid they drafted last year, uh, 
Clyde Edwards Alaire or Daryl Williams. It does not matter. Whoever plays running back for the Kansas City Chiefs was good, right? Who's is going to be good? And you think in the West Coast offense, it seems like anybody that's plugged into the 49ers offense, they're good, right? I get all of that, but check this out. And this is something that you have to pay attention to. Even the 49ers went out and got a better player than Christian McCaffrey. So you think that if anybody was good, they wouldn't necessarily need to go out and get someone else. What they'd actually do is just keep plugging away with those guys that are good. However, um, that what they would actually do from that standpoint is, yeah, we'll, we'll settle for those guys and then we'll use all of our money somewhere else. We'll use all of our money, our real money, on other positions. It's not what they did. They gave up resources and went out and got Christian McCaffrey. There are just some guys that have certain special traits. I think Travis Etienne has an opportunity to be one of those guys with those special traits. And that's because in what I consider his de facto rookie season, the dude had 1,100 yards, was super, super explosive, hit the home run, was always a threat as a catcher or as a guy who could take a four-yard gain and turn it into 30. And that's the difference between him and James Robinson and some of the other players around the NFL. So, yeah, um, I think Travis Etienne was well worth it, but there's still work to do at his position, whether in the draft or in free agency. And why is there work to do? Because of those teams I just mentioned, because of Kansas City. When you see they don't lose anything when they go to their backup or their third string running back, everyone has a role. And I think too many times the backup running back position on a lot of teams, and we've seen this here in Jacksonville, is used just for a guy who's some sort of change of pace or just some dude who does a couple of little things real well. And, you know, we took the fifth running back, the guy the 49ers cut, and we brought him here. It's because the 49ers have a good eye for it. I don't want the fourth run, the fifth running back off of the 49ers. So we're going to talk about where we can get some help for him, why it's important for him to get help in segment three. But first, we're going to talk about specific concerns we have with Travis Etienne himself. He's not perfect, okay? He's definitely not perfect. We're going to go through it all here, and I'm going to tell you exactly why I feel the way I feel about him but we're not gonna beat him up too bad either we're gonna talk about the things that he does good we'll do that in segment two here in just a second on locked on jaguars i have to talk to you first about today's sponsor which is fanduel man i am so glad that fanduel has now joined up with locked on because i've been a fan and i have been a client of customer if you will for a long time and now the midway point of the nba a season is beyond us and past us. It's the perfect time for you to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's right. That's bonus back bets. That's bonus bets back if your team doesn't win. You heard me. If your team doesn't win, you get bonus bets back. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. I have been doing this for a long time, and there's no better sports book than FanDuel. And no better bet for you right now than the West, the, the West Coast Conference in the NBA. I'm telling you, man, that's where it needs to be, and FanDuel gets you all the information. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And you are here with me, the T-double-I-G-G, -G, every single day here on Locked On Jaguars, and we're eternally grateful to have you with us. All of the new listeners of Locked on Jaguars, welcome also. 
whether you're watching on YouTube. Y'all looking at YouTube, y'all see my little brick background I got up there today. I'm just experimenting and trying new things. Uh, but actually, it looks good. Looks good. I mean, this dude that's on the camera doesn't look too bad either. But we're talking about Travis Etienne. We're talking about all of the things that he brought the Jaguars, the explosiveness, the suddenness, the ability to change field position, the home run effect. It's been a long time since y'all seen a running back take the ball, bust up the middle, and get to the second and third level, and no one can catch him. Well, that's him. That's what he does, right? He looked a lot like the Travis Etienne who played at Clemson along with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, did not look like this was his first year playing. He was technically not a rookie, but he did not look like a rookie the way he ran the football and the way he played. So the question is, Is are we done yet? No. What now? All right, I'll tell you right now. First, I want to talk about some, some concerns. First of all, down the stretch, he was not in some big games late, and it, we have to figure out why. Was he banged up? Did they see something in the matchups? Were they saving him a little bit in the KC game um, to try to get the game a little bit closer with the passing game and then use him as a bit of a switcheroo in terms of play calling? It's just hard to, for me to sit here and brag about a guy and act like I didn't see him absent in the game on the road against the Chiefs. Um, he hadn't fumbled, so uh, it makes you wonder, he was he either banged up or is this a pass protection issue? And it might not be that he isn't great at pass protection. It could have been Jermichael Hasty, who was in the game, is just really, really, really good at pass protection, and it was less risky to have him in the game at that point. You never know. You never know what the rotation is. You never know. Was it uh, Bernie Parmalee? Was it Doug Peterson? Was it Press Taylor? Who decided to go with Jermichael Hasty? That's a, a huge question. And then something else. There's something else that we've talked about, whether it's on social media or even us in the press box. Guys in the press box were saying that, like, every time, especially uh, a little, uh, probably through three quarters of the year, guys were like, Every time he gets hit, man, it looks like all hell just broke loose. You're expecting when Travis Etienne gets hit that pads are going to fly, that his helmet, his mouthpiece, his pants are going to end up backwards when he gets up off the ground. It just looked like that, man. It really, really looked like Wiley Coyote and some sort of train wreck happening every single time he got hit to the point where we go, ooh, ow. And he'd pop up and just run back to the huddle. And, you know, we had to check and make sure that uh, his teeth were in his mouth and make sure to check that his helmet wasn't on backwards. That's how hard it seems like some of these hits were. And the only conclusion I came to, I asked a, a buddy of mine that played uh, running back at a big time college and had a little sniff in the NFL. What makes it look like that? He said, well, he's taking some big hits, but you take those big hits when you run with your legs as opposed to running behind your pads. And I said, you run with your legs. What else you going to run with? You, you, you going to run with your hands? He was like, no, you're missing the point. You have to run with your legs. But as you anticipate com, uh, contact, you have to get behind your pads and let your shoulder pads take the hit and not your thighs. He's running legs first. And it's because he's trying to score a touchdown. And when you try to score a touchdown, you don't think you, – you see the hit coming, but you ain't anticipating it because you expect that you're going to be able to run through it or that you're running a little bit too fast. At some point, to save himself a little bit and to have some longevity – and I applaud him for not worrying about longevity, by the way. I applaud him for not saving himself. But at some point, what you have to do is you have to protect yourself and you have to play the game a certain way, which means you must – get to the point where you know when it's time to say that's it, right? This is all I can get. I'm going to live to fight another day. Go down, use your pad level, square up. Don't let them get a good hit on you. Protect the ball, protect yourself. Go out of bounds or hit the ground. He hasn't learned that yet. I think uh, that's because he's – we always use the – I know I always use the analogy of a roller coaster. When you're young, you ride a roller coaster. When you get older, you get smarter and you start protecting yourself. And I think that's what he's going to eventually do uh, to avoid getting banged up and to prolong his career. So those are the two things that I have that are concerned. I might be off base on one of them. I don't know why 
um, whether you know maybe they thought okay he's maybe it's something as simple as he was slipping in, in on that wet surface in Kansas City. I just don't know. Maybe they thought Jamichael was on to something and the team went with the hot guy instead of going with their best guy. All of these things are good questions. So what do we do now? How does he improve? How does he get better? We'll talk about it here in segment three on Locked on Jaguar. All right, rolling along here, segment three on Locked on Jaguars. We thank you for making us your first listen. A lot of good content around the Locked on Jaguars network. Make sure you check out Locked on NFL Draft. Great show. Great show and a very timely show. Because all of you guys are out there doing mocks right now, it's good to have someone who can give you the information. Check that out. Also, Locked On NFL, the uh, the, sh- the show, the podcast. It's wherever you get your podcast for free. I'm there on Wednesdays with my partner in crime, James Rapine. So we'd like to see you over there as well. Just so much good content on our network. Um, What do the Jags need to do? And what does Travis Etienne need to do? Let's take the second question first. Travis Etienne just has to continue to get better, get stronger, um, have a proper diet. I know a lot of running backs, uh, a lot of players, period, but especially running backs, they change their diet because of uh, soft tissue injuries that that you can do a good job of stretching. I know guys that did yoga and Pilates, believe it or not. Um, he has to do the things in the offseason to protect himself and take care of himself as a player. Uh, I have no doubt that he'll do that. Uh, he comes from a, a family of athletes that are, are doing well right now. So you don't get to that point uh, without absolutely knowing how to take care of your body. Work on pass protection. Strengthen those shoulders. Um, work on all the little things, all the little things that make running backs good. Uh, change of direction, open field, being able to do a lot of things. Not that he had, he's had a taste of the NFL the real NFL, not the one where you just practice and then miss the entire season. But once he's had that taste of the NFL, I just think that there's a lot there for him to understand, okay, from week to week, this is what I have to do. Most of it's just maintenance stuff, taking care of your body. Uh, Jerome Bettis described it as having a car accident 20 times all in one day and not being able to get out of bed on Monday morning. Um, Those are the things that I believe he can can look out for and make himself better at – a little bit, but the Jaguars have to help him. And how do you help him? You help him by getting him some help. You get another one of those guys that's similar to him if you can. Not just making the backup position the throwaway position. Make the backup position, make it a guy who can start or maybe who has been a starter. And then you can also top that off by getting a third guy who gives you something that you don't have. Normally, the guys that you want that gives you something that you don't have are guys like Travis Etienne. I don't think that's the case here. I think they can use another Travis Etienne type and then get a different type. And what that type is, is a big guy, a big physical dude that knows how to pass protect, that knows how to catch the ball, that can play in the red zone, that won't get our, our quarterback killed uh, or hurt. Or guys, uh, free agent, there's some guys out there that are uh, free agent uh, right now uh, Samaj P. Ryan, of course, everyone around here knows about him because he played at University of Florida. He's also played um, with uh, the Cincinnati Bengals, who have made some really two really good runs, one to the Super Bowl, one to the AFC Championship. And he's been a big part of that. Even though he doesn't start, he backs up Joe Mixon. Whenever they need him, man, he's always there. He's hard-nosed, especially at the end of the game. He's very, very hard to tackle. So uh, a guy like that could truly help. Um, there are a few players uh, similar to that around um, the NFL uh, that could – Jamal Williams, in fact, will be a free agent. The only thing about it, you got to wonder, he's such a part of the Detroit organization. He led the NFL in rushing touchdowns last year. I think the number he got to was 17. Uh, wasn't their full-time guy, you know. That was uh, Swift uh, out of Georgia. He was their main running back, but Williams does a lot. You know, and he, he's used to being a backup. He was a backup in Green Bay, a backup now with sort of a starter's role. The question with him is because he scored so many touchdowns, how much money? He's a fun dude to be around too. How much money is that going to cost? 
Will he be making? He'll probably be making because he's a free agent. Be making more than Travis Etienne, who's on a rookie deal as a first round pick. So, um, another one, and I know people don't want to hear this. Some people is Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette is going to be a free agent in Tampa. They had a nice little run. It's done. He's matured. Will he come in here and accept a backup role to be um, your backup back on a team that is ascending? Yes. I think a lot of guys you think won't want to play here, that is going to change because of Doug Peterson, because of Trevor Lawrence, and because of the excitement that folks saw. There are people who played here in the past that may want to come back because they love the city. They never hated the city. They just hated the, the coaches. They didn't really hate them. They just they wanted to win. And you all know we weren't winning with those past administrations for whatever reason. And Dave, Dave Caldwell is a good friend of mine. It's just still, it just was not working for some reason, right? And there are a lot of reasons. Most of those reasons are satisfied. You got a good head coach. You have a uh, generational quarterback. And now you have a season where they won and they came together. And folks are saying, no, don't let those bad guys come back in and mess up the chemistry of this team. Those bad guys wanted this team to win. And those bad guys weren't so bad in 2017, right? So all, you saw what happened when you take those players from a losing organization and put them on a winning team, whether it's Fournette, whether it's um, Jalen Ramsey or whoever. Guys get older, they get smarter, and they get wiser. Get we, you know, there's just certain people that need to get out of their feelings and understand that those guys know what it is when they come back here. They know whose team it is. Um, you just can't have any throwaways. No throwaways. Guys got to be, you know, you got to elevate the floor. You elevated the ceiling some. You still need some help there, but you also have to elevate the floor. Everybody on that 53 needs to be a contributor, a guy that understands what it is and not someone you're waiting on, not someone you just have around because he's a good special teams gunner. Everyone on that field needs to be all in if this team is going to elevate. I'm going to talk timeline tomorrow. What's the timeline? What's the reasonable expectation of the Jacksonville Jaguars and how good they can be? We'll do all of that. Until then, you guys take care of each other, and I thank you for joining me here for another edition of Locked on Jaguars, and I will see you next time.